Hello, this is Doug from Homes Now, Not Later. I just wanted to give everybody some news, as well as correcting the record in certain areas in regards to claims made about our organization from some people on our page. First, the good news. Uh, we had our weekly meeting with the planning director, Rick Seppler, as well as Bellingham Police Chief Dahl. Uh, City Council member Hannah Stone also joined us for the call. This meeting was longer than normal and it was primarily focused on claims that Marcus has been making about the sweeps slash cleanups or whatever you want to call them. I felt that it was a productive meeting. Marcus explained that officers had told him on the ground when he was part of the two camp cleanups. Uh, he explained that there was a disconnect in policy and that the policy from the top wasn't clearly stated on the forms in which the officers get in the field. The chief explained that sites are only cleared when there is a risk to public safety or health risk and that it's complaint based in terms of that. Marcus made the argument that the policy wasn't reaching the ground and that the decision to clean up a camp was based on too few people to make a proper determination. Marcus wanted to see a Whatcom Health Department staff member present at cleanups to determine if a policy was needed based on health concerns. Marcus suggested that the officers in the field get a copy of the actual policy um, with their materials to clear up campsites. Uh, Chief Dahl agreed that this was a good idea and that it would be relatively easy to implement. I asked the chief if there were cases in which camps weren't cleared after an assessment was done where they concluded it wasn't a risk, despite complaints. He said there were a number of cases of that. I asked for a few things. I want the city and the Bellingham Police Department to make the distinction between sweeps and cleanups and post it publicly. I always thought that a sweep meant that they had to be moved along in a short period of time. But the chief indicated that sweeps are when it are that he defined sweeps or they defined sweeps as when it's indiscriminate and like a blanket policy where they find camps even if they're fine and get rid of them right away. I can understand why people have different definitions when it comes to a sweep or a cleanup, and I asked for that distinction and definition to be made. I asked for some numbers in regards to camps that were cleaned up versus camps that were left alone. I hope those materialize. It would be it would really help people get a bird's eye view of the overall numbers. City Council Member Hannah Stone was also present at the meeting and suggested a flow chart for procedures around what would cause a camp to be removed. I agree that it would be a good idea and I would and that it would help people who are on the streets too so they know what they need to do in order to not be cleared. Uh, we will have more updates on that next week <clears throat> when we meet with them next. I also want to add that, as usual, Unity Village is doing great, and I'm proud of all the residents for making their village a success. They are all good people, and everybody is better off from when I first met them, and that makes me happy. We also had another development happen today. Uh, we had a few comments posted on our page making claims about our organization. Uh, and I wanted to clear up the record and explain the details of the situation so that people have the facts and we can remain 100% transparent. This comment was posted on our page from Esther Heckman. It reads, one change is not the new board. Uh, oh, when she said board, she's referring, a person made a comment that Holmes now has a new board after the new management in October. Uh, Esther said that uh, one change is not a new board. Many current members were uh, board members when Jim embezzled. There was no oversight. They were negligent and didn't want to be held accountable. If they want to move on, great. But this idea that they are blameless and everyone else is the devil is untrue and harmful to the community. Holmes now needs to stop throwing fits like children and learn to work with others. Every other provider in the county gets this concept. Uh, first of all, I just wanted to say that the current board is made up of three of the original board members. Myself, Carol, and Lizzie. And some new ones as well, Marcus D. and Nick Lewis. 
The three former board members were removed from the organization. Jim was removed because of theft and sexual harassment. He also sent a letter indicating admitting fault. Charlie and Rachel were removed from the board as well for mistreatment of residents of Safe Haven and Unity Village. I also wanted to remind the public that the stolen funds were discovered internally by our organization and that I revealed the raw facts of the situation to the public within a few days of discovering the misappropriated funds. Investigating mistreatment of residents by these three board members and investigating sexual harassment from Jim toward a resident is how I eventually discovered the theft by accident when I interviewed residents to gather information about what was going on down there. There was oversight uh, because there were signs, when there were signs that something wasn't right, then the other board members immediately stopped, stepped in to deal with it. Uh, yes, we were too late and should have found it sooner. So I would, I would say the oversight was slower than it should have been, but it was still present and acted upon immediately once we were made aware of the situation. The reason why we didn't uh, find it sooner um, is because all of, uh, all of the three remaining board members uh, were more in the background while everything was being built and increased and the sites were being set up. Jim, Rachel, and Charlie were the ones doing the day-to-day -day work and there were a lot of moving pieces going on in a short period of time, uh, including massive donations within a three-month time span, you know, that kind of stuff. Uh, so we missed it. Uh, we weren't equipped for how fast we grew in, in that short of a time. Uh, as soon as we were aware of it, uh, we dealt with the problem immediately and created stronger controls and policies to prevent it from happening again. These policies are already implemented. There will be links provided in the description of this video. Here are the links to our updated staff and financial policy procedures, as well as our handbook and rules for uh, residents of Unity Village and protections that they have. Um, the remaining board members were not negligent because as soon as we discovered mistreatment and financial misuse of funds, we acted on it immediately and changed policy within our organization to prevent it from happening again. No, we weren't bean counting and looking at every single daily transaction. The amount of money coming in made sense with what was getting built, and we all trusted Jim, including his ex-wife, Carol. That turned out to be a mistake. Uh, and Carol's on the board, by the way, um, and still is on the board. She didn't do anything wrong, uh, but they're divorced now. Um, the main thing on all of our minds on, for the whole organization with Homes Now was that um, all we were trying to do is just help people who were homeless and get more people housed. After the theft happened, I was approached by many people saying that I was going to get in trouble for what Jim did and that I might get charged with a crime when I'm the one that reported it and exposed it. That I needed to be held accountable for not stopping him sooner. <clears throat> I would ask what crime did I commit? Uh, was, was it wrong to discover a crime and make it known? Is it my is my sin my sin that I didn't find it fast enough? Well, for that I apologize and um, I'm sorry, but uh, it wasn't just me either. Nobody else seemed to suspect anything, uh, including Charlie, a former tax accountant, including the city the chief of police, they meet with us weekly and there wasn't anything obviously suspicious that you would automatically think that. Um, I wanted to remind everybody that I did ask Jim for receipts and I did see him legitimately uh, reimburse people in cash from time to time when they bought building materials and other stuff. But I just needed the receipts. I was not worried because we only needed the receipts for our paperwork that we do yearly to fill out on our uh, 990 form, the equivalent of a tax return form for if you're a nonprofit. Uh, we discovered the theft in September when paperwork for uh, needing receipts wasn't needed until June of 2020. 
So um, if no theft had occurred, uh, we would have had many months to gather all of our receipts and fill out all of our paperwork. When we handed the evidence over to the police, including by request, uh, including a resignation letter from Jim, uh, there was evidence uh, where he admitted fault. Uh, there was evidence of checks being cashed and not hitting the bank account, a fact that was withheld from the treasurer, Carol, and obscured the story even further from the rest of the board, trying to figure out what was going on. Once we realized what was going on, we acted on it. Uh, I think that that's the opposite of ne negligent. Uh, people should focus more on the people who committed the crimes uh, rather than the ones that who didn't catch them in the act um, soon enough. Um, Esther also made the claim that uh, we think that everybody else is the devil and uh, I'm not sure where that's coming from and I don't think anybody has uh, specifically said that. Um, Esther also claimed that Holmes now needs to stop throwing fits like children and learn how to work with others. I hope that I don't come off as a child throwing a fit when I do my videos or when I advocate. Um, I know sometimes volunteers for Homes Now uh, speak truth to power from their own perspective and that that's not very comfortable or easy sometimes, especially given the current political climate in our country right now. If there's anything we post that seems like a child throwing a fit, please post it and talk about it and uh, we can um, address it. I can also say that I work with others every single day and we foster an atmosphere in homes now of people working together daily. Fostering that atmosphere is how Unity Village has been a smashing success because instead of ordering residents around and treating them like children, uh, you encourage them to work together and work on their own issues and issues with each other um, between each other as adults and um, to help each other make progress. Homes Now is made up of people from all walks of life, and they all have their own opinion and point of view. Our diversity of perspectives gives us strength. Uh, it's not an echo chamber, though, and sometimes it can feel a little chaotic to deal with our organization, and I understand that, but that's okay. It's not the same as children throwing a fit. I guess that's all I have to say about that point. Another uh, comment made by Esther reads, the reason why most people don't want to work with Homes Now is because all of you are toxic to our community members. Uh, you have demonstrated that you don't want to work with other organizations unless they agree to everything you ask without question. Not only that, but your agency has a history of lack of oversight and mishandling of funds that you just want everybody to pretend never happened. The way that you are going after service providers who disagree with you is by lying about them and making personal attacks, um, and it is wrong. It's not a good look for your organization either. I wanted to remind Esther that our organization has operated on our own model outside of the standard web of service providers. Uh, also, we have never taken government funds, so we're, we're even more outside of their models than normal just on that alone. We have not told them that they have to agree with everything we ask. Uh, in fact, we haven't asked them for anything. We've mostly asked for more sites to set up villages uh, on because we think that it works and it's been a smashing success with Unity Village. We just want to do more of what we're doing while the other organizations are free to do what they do. Uh, we are, don't worry, we're not trying to take away anything from the other organizations. Don't worry, we're not trying to take away any of your turf. Uh, we're just trying to create more turf for all groups so that homelessness is solved and done. We're one component of many, and while we're activists and some volunteers get heated feeling sometimes, it doesn't mean that we're asking any other organization to do what we ask other than to let us house more people with some basic land and electric, hook, electric and water hookups with a quarter of an acre. We have mostly approached local governments with that because they have a mission to look after the general welfare uh, codified into law. Uh, private organizations have their own rules and there's no reason for us to ask them for anything. If they have something to offer though, we're glad to help make it happen. Uh, we just need land, some land, a quarter of an acre with the basic electric and water hookups 
um, for a sanctioned uh, tent encampment site uh, the, to be upgraded to a tiny home village ASAP. Um, our agency... Sorry, one sec. Our agency doesn't have a lack of oversight, though, as I've previously explained, and the organization didn't mishandle funds. Uh, Jim did. Jim was the former president of Homes Now, and just because he stole money doesn't mean that the entire organization was mishandling funds. We actually don't pretend that it never happened. That's why I made a public video and revealed the information to the public uh, at the, with the advice of many other people not to do so, by the way. Uh, um, and that video is still up. I've included a link to it in the description of this video. We also did not take down any of the old videos either of Jim or other board members and what he did to build this organization. It still wouldn't have happened without Jim. And I think it's important for the public to see the history and evolution of Homes Now and that it's not black and white. Uh, we're not, we're only three years old and we have had to learn things along the way, such as what happened and evolved from it. Uh, it's not a death sentence uh, for the people that we're serving or the members of this organization. Um, and all of the volunteers and donors of Homes Now shouldn't be written off just because of one person. We've been able to effectively run a tiny home community with the residents of Unity Village. Uh, it was an experiment and we've proven that the experiment works over an entire year with smooth and improving operations every day. I am, under, I am wondering what lies we've told. In regards to homeless services in town, as I've said before, we are not trying to take away or destroy any of the work that's being done by any of the service providers or local governments. They are needed. All, I, all of that I'm asking for is recognition that what Homes Now does is filling a certain niche that was not being serviced before. We're serving a group, a specific group that was not being serviced properly before. Uh, that doesn't mean we're serving everyone. It means we're serving people, certain people that were not serviced well before based on who they are and what they need. And, um, and we're not saying that what we do is what everybody needs, um, but it helps a significant number of people and uh, we can increase that where it makes sense. Uh, we just need a quarter of an acre of land with basic water and electric hookups and we can take care of the rest. We're sorry that we can't afford to buy land for $500,000, but the day-to-day -day operations and utilities is very manageable. Uh, Unity Village costs around $1,200 a month to operate in the summer and around $2,000 a month to operate in the winter because uh, of electric heating. Um, Another problem that we've been encountering, but I think it is the best possible problem that we can have, um, is that some members of Unity Village have indicated to me that housing, that the housing they're being offered um, in terms of from the other service providers or, or uh, quote unquote permanent housing um, is of lower quality that, or worse than the emergency housing that we provide. I know that we're emergency housing and, and I know that it's transitional housing as well, but that doesn't mean that we're going to decrease our quality to make other options look more appealing or more establishment options look more appealing. I think it's important to realize that there's an extra component that a tiny home village has that other housing options might not have is the idea of community. The village helps each other out makes each other's lives easier, works together to keep the site running smoothly. As the board, we try to make sure that they are able to manage their own affairs, uh, similar to an apartment situation where they are treated more as tenants rather than um, homeless people. People who live there are from all walks of life. Residents are also, uh, also contribute monthly in order to pay for utilities of the site. We don't make any money off of them but it's an extremely low cost situation uh, that most can afford, even people that are homeless. Most people that are homeless have a source of income. They might have a job, they might have disability, and um, you know, $100 a month or whatever is not too much to ask for many people experiencing that. 
and it 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 creates a situation where they help to pay for their own situation and it's self-sufficient and it also preps them for when they are on their own in an apartment where they're going to have to pay significantly more and and it's to give the, get them used to those expectations of having to do that um once they don't live at unity village anymore um and so uh and again um it's it's um it's really, but it's not, it's not required. We have provisions for if people can't pay. Um, it's really, it's really a donation. They're donating to keep their own housing basically. And, um, it's really more of a suggested donation, but, um, and, and they want to contribute. They do like all of them do. Um, the suggested rate is around 10% of income or $150 a month. Uh, whichever is lower and the money goes directly into the utility costs such as electricity and uh, maintenance of the site when equipment breaks and stuff like that we have to replace parts sometimes like if the water heater breaks or something like that um, I wanted to remind people again that nobody at homes now at all is paid a dime uh, and we don't take government money but we ask the government to facilitate progress in some simple and easy ways to help make a further dent in this problem and get more people off the streets. Um, we, are all, we are an all volunteer organization. So even though we're always on a shoestring budget, uh, we are able to do more with less compared to many other organizations uh, because wages for full-time volunteers uh, gets pretty expensive pretty fast. Uh, if we had paid staff, there wouldn't be a village right now. Uh, sometimes there's disagreements or arguments um, between board members, between staff members, and between residents. Uh, but um, everybody gets along and tolerates each other for the most part. And uh, at the village, there's not been a single police call or major incident. Whenever homes now, wherever homes now has been hosted, um, crime went down in the surrounding neighborhood. Sometimes by as much as thirty percent according to chief, the chief of police of Bellingham, David Dahl. Uh, we also have another comment on the same thread from uh, Melissa Bird. It reads, you guys never really tried to work with the mission. You, you've had them on blast for years. With the history of Homes Now, you would think that you would want community support, but they continue to burn bridge after bridge. Just because I didn't work with you, which isn't true right away, uh, does not mean that I did not work with the community. Um, first off, I can say right away that we have not been against the Lighthouse Mission, providing the services that they do. I think if they w weren't there, uh, there would be a lot more people randomly on the streets, and nobody wants that, including the people on the streets. Um, and there's many people that are served by the mission. Um, I do not feel like we've burned every bridge. Uh, I think that when you're advocating for change and trying to create changes in policy, it's an uncomfortable process. Um, we've had clashes with the mission from time to time, but it's good to not take it too personally. Uh, we're all trying to help people in different areas and it all adds up. Uh, I can't say that enough, it all adds up. We're all doing different things, but if and we don't necessarily have to come up with a master plan together, but when we all do different things, uh, it adds up to the problem being solved uh, because we're helping different segments of the population and eventually you run out of segments. Uh, sometimes uncomfortable situations and self-reflection lead to good things later. Every organization needs a kick in the butt sometimes, including ours, and it causes us all to evolve and improve the situation in the long run. Um, a little bit of backstory on the relationship between Homes Now and the mission. There have been a few issues that have come up in the past. One of those issues was that our organization and their organization um, has disagreed on certain policies and uh, treatment of homeless individuals. We have also heard stories from many homeless individuals that have had to stay at the mission. And for the most part, it wasn't necessarily positive or uh, puppies and rainbows. But I understand though, um, I understand when you have a situation and a model with 100 plus people in one room you can help more people right now today. And that's the idea too behind an emergency shelter. I, I totally get it. Um, but it gets harder and harder to manage uh, things 
and 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 random things such as crimes or whatever happen more often than um, with other models where people might have their own space because uh, people just rub off on each other and if you have people that don't like each other and you have a hundred twenty with twenty people sometimes flare ups happen but if you have a hundred uh, that's going to be really hard to manage and you know I I think that the fact that it's as calm as it is is uh, commendable. Uh, I, I just don't agree with that way of sheltering, but like uh, if they didn't do it and there's no other option right now, then uh, th then uh, it's better that they do it than to not have that option. Um, the main issue between Homes Now and the mission, uh, to add to the backstory further, is that um, it happened in February of 2019. This is what caused us to get banned from the premises. Um, when winter hit, um, there was a lot of snow and ice for a few weeks. Uh, the city of Bellingham and the mission made a public statement indicating that emergency shelters didn't need to be open because there was room at the mission. Uh, but later that night, members of the community in, in outreach, uh, in this case Marcus D and JC Mansfield, uh, brought people who were out in the cold to the mission where they subsequently said that they were full and to go to Mount Vernon instead after they had previously said that they weren't turning people away. The quote-unquote sin in Marcus's case was that he recorded them saying that uh, in person on his phone and uh, that it's technically not allowed and it's technically not legal uh, to do that uh, because Washington state law has laws against recording people without their consent. But the video was real, the evidence was real, and the statement was real, even though he technically wasn't allowed to do that. Um, after the video was uploaded online, uh, we were told to be spreading misinformation and lies about the organization. Uh, we were not. After that, after that, we were banned from their premises. But again, if something gets exposed as different than what has been told, then revealing it or making it known is an uncomfortable process uh, this was one night and maybe they got a flood of people at the last minute and they thought the statement was valid earlier in the day I get it but it created a rift with some of our volunteers and supporters toward the mission consequently I want to make it clear that homes now that at homes now we don't tell our volunteers what to think and we don't all think alike often they disagree with each other too, uh, and that's okay. But it might be why the messages from our organization are somewhat chaotic because everybody has a seat at the table and it's a motley crew from different backgrounds trying to solve the same problem. And we have different ideas about how to do that. The other disagreement with the mission as well is that Homes Now is a secular or non-religious organization. Um, as late as 2017, there was not even an option for a nonprofit to provide tiny home villages in Bellingham to house the homeless, unless it was a religious organization. We also disagreed with the assertions of the Lighthouse Mission about homeless individuals and what will best help them. If you want to see how the director of the Lighthouse Mission, Hans, thinks about providing services and charity, then uh, totally, totally check out one of his videos, check out one of his sermons. Um, I have included the video in the description of this video uh, titled Hans Erchinger Davis, Toxic Charity, August 31st, 2016 Renewal Forum. Um, the discussion in the video around homeless charity work really heats up around the 40 minute mark. Um, Unity Village, the tiny home community in Fairhaven managed by Homes Now, represents the first tiny home community for the homeless in Bellingham. This happened because we did the sleep out and camped out on City Hall for 18 days in December of 2017. What immediately followed the next month was policy changes which allowed for non-religious nonprofits to operate tiny home communities as well as other provisions. Previously, the charity of a church uh, w was our only option for land. After the policy change we pushed for and we got, uh, we were able to set up uh, Winter Haven, Safe Haven, and Unity Village as a result. And the results speak for themselves. 
I never want to do another sleep out again. But whether we want to admit it or not, the pressure on local officials changed policy. But it was extremely uncomfortable, I admit, with a lot of tense emotions and heated discussion um, from all sides. Uh, this policy change amended, at first as an emergency ordinance, but later became part of the actual municipal code. This policy change amended Bellingham Municipal Code Chapter 20.15, Temporary Shelters for People Experiencing Homelessness. I have included a link in the description of this video to the Bellingham Municipal Code, uh, to this section. It still took us a year after that was passed in order for us to be able to set up Winter Haven. Uh, but this policy change allowed for this to happen. We think this code could still use some improvements though, including a change that allows for temporary shelters such as the mission and uh, its current location at the former Terra Organica grocery store location on Cornwall Avenue, as well as Unity Village and uh, future sites to operate longer than uh, just two years. Uh, if it makes sense, and if the land isn't being used for anything else yet. With COVID and increased unemployment and evictions, it's best not to be penned in by an arbitrary number of years. Permits can be written one year at a time and cut off at any time. So allowing for more time for all sides allows for flexibility of a situation for all parties involved. I really just want to go in and say, we can do this. We can make a deal. Let's make progress where it's easy to accommodate. Let's boost this. Let's shake hands. But it's never worked that way. I really wish it did. Often when the situation gets really uncomfortable, a policy change happens in an area we asked for, but we've never wanted to operate like that. I've always thought that we were helping people get housed, but sometimes it just feels like political theater is all that works. And maybe that's how the system works. It's certainly how national politics works but I don't like it. If any entity, whether a government entity or any of these shelters in town or a private landowner wants to help, we are trying to house more people with a good result and we've proven that it's working and we need at least a quarter of an acre of land with water and electric hookups for to support 20 tiny homes. And we don't have enough money to buy the land unless we get some kind of angel donor which is unlikely and it looks like a pipe dream to me at this point. But maybe, maybe if you're out there, have at it. No one's stopping you from helping uh, make that happen. Uh, we don't need taxpayer dollars to do this, but we do need people to donate if they can. Without the donors, without you guys, uh, Homes Now wouldn't be able to be in operation. We've become more and more self-sufficient, but your help keeps us afloat. And if we have any extra from when you help us, we are just able to do more. Uh, simple as that. Another comment by Melissa Bird states, you guys don't always know everything. I have never understood the motive of trying to bring down other organizations that help thousands of people so you can help a fraction of that. I don't understand your inability to play well with others. Uh, Melissa is correct in a sense that we don't always know everything. That's true. Uh, there's certainly a lot that we don't know, uh, but we are making an effort to learn more every single day and make progress. I don't think anybody or any organization knows everything, um, including the mission, including the Opportunity Council, including uh, Road to Home. Uh, Homes Now and members of Homes Now have never said that we want to bring down these other organizations. All we are saying is that we can help add to the situation in areas where they might not be currently helping or able to help uh, and where it's easy, where there's a quarter of an acre and basic hookups for water and electricity, uh, where we can take more people off the streets. As I've said multiple times, it all adds up. The, the mission does something, the Opportunity Council does something, the city does something, the county does something. Other organizations do something, and then it adds up to homelessness being done and solved. Um, Melissa uh, was a former volunteer for Homes Now and stopped volunteering with Homes Now a few weeks after the change in management in October of 2019. This was over policy differences that could not be reconciled. Some of these policy differences included 
the subject of paid staff versus volunteers, random drug test policy, um, differences in strategy related to how to deal with the theft, whether to uh, go really public with it or whether to try to keep it contained. Um, and also uh, differences on, on strategies on how to help people that are experiencing difficulty and struggling with homelessness. As a result, uh, she fo formed her own nonprofit. They are called Road to Home. Uh, their mission statement is housing through community mentors. In contrast, Homes Now's mission statement is ending homelessness one person at a time. I think both are needed, honestly. Uh, I look forward to seeing what they can do. I've included a link to their page in the description of this video. Uh, it's okay if we have disagreements on policy, and I'm happy that she decided to form her own nonprofit, partially made up of former Homes Now volunteers. I think if we just have more service providers in town with different outlooks for people with, who need different things, then we'll finally be able to solve homelessness together. Uh, we don't necessarily need to work together directly uh, if it doesn't make sense, and, and, uh, but we're not close to the idea of working together directly if it does make sense. Uh, I wish them the best in their endeavors. I just want people housed and that's all. Simple as that. After COVID is over, Melissa, is always welcome to come and visit the village and help residents find housing if she thinks that she can help with mentoring and housing placement. Um, we don't ban anybody. Uh, she's welcome to come down anytime. And if she has housing for somebody, we welcome that and we want that. So uh, thank you, Melissa, if you can help with that. Um, if anybody else has any questions or concerns about anything, please don't hesitate to contact us directly. And um, we're doing all we can to help and uh, get more people housed in a responsible way as quickly as possible. Um, we're one component of many. Um, we're not trying to take down any other organizations in town uh, and it all adds up and we're just trying to do more and we can do more and we feel kind of contained uh, and like we're like we're underutilized. Um, so all I have to say is uh, have a great weekend and good luck.